Well, here we are. It's another month. Another month has gone by. Happy August. We're talking about what the market's doing right now. Yes. Okay. You say, oh, it's great. And I'm not seeing much. It's great. I see a lot of people still on vacation. We've had some sellers call and say, well, you know, at the end of the summer, maybe I should put my house in the market. But what are you seeing in the marketplace? Since we don't have any reports from Mar. Yeah, we do have. They're probably busy doing lawsuit stuff. We'll talk lawsuit in a little bit. Can't wait for that as well. Well, you know I'm the eternal optimist. Always. So everything's always great. This place could be on fire. It's great. We're good. Um, no, I am noticing still a ton of buyers and more coming out because of the recent rate drop. Yep. That's a good thing. Our open houses, you know, depending upon the area, have been packed. Investors are out in full force. Um, I am noticing a lot of buyers now, I mean, sellers now coming and saying, now that rates have dropped, you know their mentality. Now they're more likely to go look for something because, you know, they're not going to go sell their house if they have a low rate right. to go pay a much higher rate. Um, so I think it's, it's a slow turnaround. It's not like all this mass, you know, group of people flying in. Um, but I'm definitely noticing a lot more activity. July, don't forget, is a slow month, which carries into August. Well, we are on August 16th. Yeah, July, August, you know, summer. <laughs> Um, I mean, July historically is slow, but you know, August, I think, um, you know, so I touched on NAR and lawsuits and stuff like that. Yes. Tomorrow officially yes. is the beginning of a new way we have to behave. Yep. Okay. And the new way has many elements, but one thing is if you're a buyer, you've got to sign paperwork. Yep. Before seeing a house. Right. And to find what you're willing to pay someone. <laughs> Gary broke the rule of not having his phone on silent. Um, so um, I share that because um, what do you think the impact of that in the short term for the market is going to be? So I think there's going to be some confusion if agents aren't properly educated. And as you know, in our office, we have been very diligent about making sure these agents are completely educated. That's very diligent. Extremely diligent. Um, it's important though. Education is key, number one. And Always. If our agents are not experts in this area, in pretty much every area, how are they going to talk to their buyers about right. what these changes are? Because the problem is the news, the media sensationalizes everything. Everyone's freaking out. What's this? I don't understand. An agreement is just an agreement. That's all that it is. It's it's a new way of doing business. It's it's we were a little loosey goosey from you know when I got my license almost ten years ago. It was okay, Mister Buyer. Here you go. You want to work with me? Great. Shake my hand. Call it a day. Now we have agreements. Being very clear and very transparent on what my role is. If I'm a buyer's agent and you're the buyer, what the expectations are and what I'm going to provide for you. You know, as you saw on the Prime My Post this morning, we talk about value. Agents need to bring something to the table. Why would someone want to work with you if you're not bringing value and education to the table? Right. And that's it. It's not, you know, people are, are, are very, you know, overthinking and the media does not help in the least bit. It is simply a new way of doing business that's clear and transparent. And, you know, if your agent is not completely educated and can't tell you what they're going to provide for you, that might not be the right agent. I think it's hard to go to a, you know, buyer and say, hey, you know, before we work together, We've got to sign some paperwork. Yep. Because at that point, they're like, well, this is a contract. Yep. And they freeze a little. Mm -hmm. They used to freeze when it was just the agency disclosure. Right. They're freezing even more now. Um, I'm saying then don't sign it. And I'm not saying don't <laughs> sign it, ignore it. No. What I'm saying is sleep on it. Yep. Look at it. Talk to someone. I don't want you to feel like you've got a gun held to your head that you've right. got to sign this. Now. If you want to go see your property this afternoon, you got to sign it. Right, you know? right. That's just, and that's not just, you know, CRG policy. That's policy everywhere. You're bringing someone to a property. You have to have some type of agreement, whether it's a day, a month, six months, or a year. Right. Um, you know, contracts always freak people out for me. You know, not being as diligent reading contracts, I sign. Great. I like you. I want to work with you. I want, you know, you to have my best interest in mind. I think it actually makes it more formal. And not as loosey goosey. And and you know, to me, I think it's a it's a, a win win. Like with a seller, I'm not going to go. I can't sell someone's house without having an agreement. What would the difference be with a buyer? So for me, mm -hmm. and I don't want to <laughs> re <laughs> redo the lawsuit. Uh, for me, we always said to someone, "You've got to work with us. Work with us. And if you don't, then that's fine." Yep. Um, and we looked at it and said, if we're going to write the offer, 
Yep. At that point, we have to be clear. Right. This is different in the sense that you've got to have the paperwork in place before you even go look at something. Right. And I think there's a loophole, just so everyone knows, if they go to an open house, yep. there's no paperwork. Right. Yeah, I mean, I just think it, it's our industry needs an elevated level of professionalism as well. And I'm actually yep. glad to see this. You know, there, there's too many things that, you know, I sit back and I see and I'm like, how does this happen? So, you know what? Let's bring our industry to the next level. Those that, you know, want to be educated, want to learn and want to do better will be a part of it. Those that don't, you know, they'll, they'll weed themselves out. How many people do you think will leave the industry on a percentage basis as a result of this? Because there are people out there keeping track right now. Yeah, I don't keep track. You know, I mean, I hope everybody succeeds. You know, I just, I hope that the agents that give us a bad name will, will weed themselves out. Survival of the fittest. I think that'll be 25%. Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be part, a good amount. Part of that is because it's not as easy as it looks. Right. A lot of people got into the business and said, I'm going to make a quick buck. Right. And now there's some additional hurdles to go through. Yeah. And I think some people are going to say it's just not worth the effort. Well, you know, right. And our industry is amazing, but there is work. You know, exactly. The, the, the four-letter word, W-R-K. Um, you know, people a lot got in during COVID. And as I say in every podcast, my dogs could have sold homes during COVID and everyone thinks this is an easy profession. I'm going to make it tough. You know, that's not how it works. The true professionals in this industry, and I can name a lot of them, are constantly on top of their game, show their worth to their buyers, and they draw people and they want to work with them. Right. So, you know, to me, I think this is a good thing. Hashtag eternal optimist. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I? But I don't think it's just being optimistic. I think that it's, I think your perspective is largely correct. Yeah. I think that that's what's going to happen. And um, you're not naive. You're right. not someone that's just going to say, oh, yeah, it's going to be great. Right. Stay tuned. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. It's not like that. No, it's, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of legal questions where we have to bring in legal people, aka lawyers. I pay, you know, well-versed professionals to come in to educate the team because there's a, and there's some things I read and I'm like, you know, let me look into that. You know, there, there's, there's a lot of, of different forms that, you know, these agents need to know through and through. And, and there's a lot of legal mumbo jumbo, as I call it, that, you know, we leave that up to the professionals, but then it's our job to articulate that in layman's terms. I like layman's terms to the buyers. Short and sweet. Why do you like layman's terms? Because if I'm reading legal speak, you're going to see that even like we do with the team in our meetings, they're talking all the legal legal jargon and the team is like, like deer in a headlights. And right. they have no idea. The average person, I consider myself an average person. I'm not listening to all this. I, just tell me what it is in regular exactly. speak and that's it. Exactly. Well, thank you for uh, sitting in today, giving us an update on the market. Happy and August. Hope your uh, optimism carries through. Oh, it will.